Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to show you how to solve the unique paths problem. A robot is located at the top left corner of an n by n grid. The robot can only move either down or right at any point in time. The robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid. How many possible unique paths are there? So the robot starts here, and he can only go right or down. So how many unique paths are there to get to the final destination, to get to this point? So how can we solve this problem? We can solve this problem using dynamic programming. There's also a mathematical solution, but I prefer the dynamic programming solution. With dynamic programming, we have to observe that the robot can only go to this point in one way. To any point in the first row, the robot can only get there in one way because the robot can only go down or right. So to get here, he can only come from the left because he went right. To get to this point, he can only get to this point by going right. He can get to this point only by going right. So there's only one way to get from here to here or to any point in the first row. In the first column, there's also only one way to get to this point. And there's also only one way to get to this point. Why? Because the robot can only go down, so coming from above. The robot can get here only because he came from above. Or the robot can get here only because he came from above. What about this block right here, this point? Okay, if the robot is here, the robot maybe he could have come from above or he could have come from the left. So the total number of ways to get to this block is the number of ways um, from the block above and the total number of ways from the block to the left coming from above and coming from the left you add them up and this is the total number of ways to get to this block so to any other block that's how you calculate the total number of ways this is a bottom-up dynamic programming solution the time complexity is big O of m times n so without further ado I'm gonna show you how to write the code first if m equals equals 0 or n equals equals 0 that means that I have 0 rows or I have 0 columns so return 0 there's no way to get to any point then I'm gonna have to have a two-dimensional array of integer dp gets a value of new two-dimensional array of integer of m rows and n columns so as you know, in dynamic programming, we use additional space. That way we can, so we can save the computations and we reuse those computations to get to the final result. We have top down and bottom up. Top down involves recursion and also memoization. Bottom up, we start from the bottom up as the name implies. So now I need to, because in the first row, I can get to any point in only one way. I can do the initialization phase of the first row to be 1. So this will be 1. For integer j gets a value of 0. j is less than the number of columns, plus plus j. dp sub 0 sub j gets a value of 1. Also, the first column it can only be one because the robot can only move down to get to any point in the first column. So I do the same. For integer i gets a value of zero. i is less than the number of, of rows plus plus i. dp sub i sub zero gets a value of one. So this here is the initialization phase of dynamic programming. Now I'm gonna take care of the other blocks. For integer i gets a value of 1. i is less than number of rows plus plus i. For integer j gets a value of 1. j is less than number of columns plus plus j. So as I said before, to get to any block uh, other than the first row or in the first column, to get to any block then I have to say the total number of ways from the block above plus the total number of ways from the block to the left because the robot can only go down or right. So that's going to be dp sub i sub j 
get the value of dp sub i sub j minus 1. That would be the block ij, the total number of ways to that block, is this is coming from the left. The total number of ways of the block coming from the left. Plus the total number of ways of the block coming from above. And by the end, what I want to return is this, how many ways there are in total in the final block. That would be return the p at position n minus 1, n minus 1. So I'm going to run the code. All right, it seems to be working fine. Submit a solution. OK, so this is working perfectly. So the time complexity is big O of n times m. And the space complexity is also big O of m times n. But now, there's a question. Can we do better? And the answer is yes, we can do better. We can reduce the space complexity. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to reduce the space complexity from big O of m times n to big O of n. So please, press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And see you next time.